ALL is a yeah a very big success story, particularly in children, because now the survival rates have reached nine out of ten children diagnosed with the disease. But unfortunately, hence talking about adults, they don't have the same success. It's more like 50% survival in, in adults. Okay, so essentially you're right, there's been no new drugs for the last 40 years. But what has changed is the doses, the combinations, the timings of the doses, and looking at the features of the patient, their clinical features, their age, their white blood cell count, their levels of minimal residual disease, and their genetics to put them into groups that you will determine their response to the treatment. So you would have those who would be defined as good risk and those who would be defined as poor risk in terms of response. And you tweak then the treatment accordingly. Poor risk groups now, um, one being the Philadelphia chromosome positive acute lymphoblastic leukemia based on findings from chronic myeloid leukemia that a drug, a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, initial one named imatinib or Gleevec, was used with success to eradicate the Philadelphia chromosome population, is now being used in adults and children carrying the Philadelphia chromosome, which in this disease is a very, very aggressive disease, in combination with their conventional therapy after long-term follow-up, what we're seeing is a vastly improved, prolonged, long-term remission, which is a success or the beginnings of a success for treatment of adult disease. Yes, we're finding, we're finding new targets, partly because we have a lot of novel technology available now, next generation sequencing techniques are allowing us to find things that we just wouldn't have known before. We're looking at genetics as a broad picture, so a gene fits into a pathway, so it has, it has a, a whole pathway of genes, and you look at the genes in the pathway instead of just individual genes. And then we can learn about molecules which will target this pathway. And so now there's an increasing list of experimental data that shows responses to a larger number of translocations or, or chromosome rearrangements. And these are being trialed or going into clinical trials. So the hope for the future is very promising. Of course, that's always a problem that you, you, you might target one pathway, but Cancer in general is a very complex disease where it involves many pathways. So you conquer one only to give rise to another one. And, and in a way, that's why our job is not yet done. I think we'll go on discovering new things, learning how these new things interact with the things we already know, and build up an increasingly complex picture. Well, I'm very heartened in that I'm a geneticist, but we work very, very closely with clinicians now more and more. And we sit down together, we talk about the sort of things that we're finding. We have drug chemists, chemists working alongside us and the clinicians. And I think because of that, things are, are happening, happening a lot quicker. We can go from bench to bedside a lot quicker than we could years ago. And we, we also have a lot of experience on which we can build because you can take data from another type of cancer and if you've got similar overlapping genes that are involved in ALL, you can try that therapy because you know how the patient's going to respond, side effects, etc. Yes, we have, um, similar to the uh, tyrosine kinases, Tyrosine on, on the able of the BCR able of the Philadelphia chromosome, there are other able partners, and also a gene called platelet derived growth factor beta, which is a very important gene in chronic myeloproliferative disorders. And these patients, chronic myeloproliferative patients, have been shown to respond really well to PKI, and particularly imatinib. 
So we're now finding this platelet-derived growth factor beta rearrangements occur in ALL, and we're starting to use imatinib on those patients with success. And we've now got a whole group of patients with a particular PDGFR beta translocation, completely refractory to conventional chemotherapy, normally would die. They're being treated with imatinib, and they're showing at least a short-term response of about one or two years is the latest data. So we're very excited. And quite recently, even here at the European Hematology Association, we've been hearing about some molecular keys that have made big differences in progression-free survival and overall survival yes. in, in certain leukemias and lymphomas. Yes, that's true. And, and I think that in the next few years we'll see similar things with the, the worrying population of adults with ALL. I think that there are new things being identified and they should be reassured that we're trying our best because there are beautiful experimental models now we can use in culture dishes, putting cells into culture and treating them in culture, which really do mirror what happens in the patient. So we can get a very good indications and go rapidly from the clinic, uh, sorry, from the laboratory into the clinic.